In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I came up with this. So this riff is in E major. So we are going to be starting off with a low E string, just an open low E string. And followed by that, we play an E major seven chord. Okay, and that's just our one chord. Then it's followed by this major pentatonic double stop lick. And basically I'm just using your standard minor pentatonic shape there. Then after that, I play another E major seven chord and then I move to this A flat seven sharp five chord. So what I'm doing here is I want to actually end up on C sharp minor but I'm before that playing a secondary dominant and that secondary dominant is an altered dominant chord as well. So if you're not sure what altered dominant chords are, I've done a video on altered dominant chords you can check out right there. Um, but we'll keep going. So this is an altered chord. So it's an a, a flat seven sharp five and just play two notes after that. Then that leads into my C sharp minor. And what I did here is I kind of just highlighted the root fifth and the third. And then I barred the whole fourth fret, just played all of those notes there and then hammered on the notes that I needed to get a minor seven chord. And then played all of the fourth fret notes again. It's a really cool thing you can do when you have a minor seven chord. Sounds really cool. Then I literally just descend the pentatonic scale with an added D sharp note here. Then I go to F sharp minor seven. Then I go to A major seven. But what I do is I hammer on from a, a six nine chord, so. Then I move to a G sharp, minor seven. Then I move to this weird chord. I'm not exactly sure what to call it. I think it's a, a minor flat six chord, a C minor flat six, we'll call it that. Um, it's probably, there's probably an easier name for it. And that C is one semitone away from our C sharp, and our C sharp is our relative minor. So the fact that this is one fret away from our relative minor gives it a kind of harmonic minor feel, and it kind of spices things up a little bit. And from there we can we can play a diminished arpeggio because we've temporarily moved into C sharp harmonic minor. Then we go back into just standard C sharp minor. We're playing the C sharp uh, triad here with an A in the bass kind of. So we've got a C sharp minor slash A. And then we can hammer on the 12th fret with our little finger of the B string. And that gives us like a minor seven voicing. Take it off again to get the minor chord. Do it again. But this time instead of pulling off, we're gonna play a C augmented triad. So that's something cool you can do. You can play a minor chord then you can just lower the root note by one to get a augmented chord and that sounds really cool and you could even lower the root further so you can keep going uh, so that's a really cool thing you can do um, then after that i just played some random ass notes from the e major scale and then to finish off we play our dominant chord which is b but I play it as a B7 flat nine. So this is, this is another altered dominant chord. And altered dominant chords are such a great way of just jazzing up your chord progressions. And they're, they're quite simple to, to use. So. so we've got that B7 flat nine. And then I descend those four notes, which is an, an A minor major seven arpeggio. But to be honest, I wasn't really thinking, oh, I'm gonna add an A minor major seven arpeggio here. I just kind of thought the notes sounded quite cool. Don't rely on using music theory too much because sometimes you can just play some random notes 
and they'll sound really good. I'm sure there's a theoretical explanation to those four notes there, but let's not worry about it. I, uh, I just came up with them, thought it sounded good, and went with it. And then we finish on an E, and that's an E6-9 chord. And what I like about 6-9 chords is that they're a nice way of resolving uh, to a major chord. They make the chord sound a bit more extravagant than just the standard major or a major 7 chord, but they don't go overboard with it and make it sound too jazzy. So there you have it. There's my breakdown of the riff that I created. If you enjoyed the video, like the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Let me know if you enjoyed it in the comments because then I'll make more of these videos. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.